SPSS time. Okay, what you're going to do is highlight. By that I mean click and drag only the numbers. Okay, so highlight all the numbers. Hold on. All right, so I highlighted just the numbers, no letters. Okay, so you're going to right click, copy. You're going to open up your SPSS. Hold on a second while I do that. So when you open up SPSS, it wants to know what do you want to do. You're just going to type in data into a new sheet. Click OK. Give it a second. And you should get this blank sheet here. So remember, SPSS has two different pages. It has the data view. That's where you type your numbers and everything. And then your variable view, that's where you label your variables. So back to data view. Upper right-hand corner. Right-click, and you're going to just hit Paste. And hopefully, everything will paste. Look at that. Really nice and neat. So there's our data now on an SPSS spreadsheet. We're going to rename the variables. So variable one was exam. Important, SPSS has some weird, um, it's kind of touchy about certain things. So in the name column only, no blanks, no commas, no periods, no hyphens, nothing weird. Okay. So the second variable was hours in a computer lab. So I'm just going to type in hours. And the third variable was percentages of lectures, I believe. So I'm just going to call that percents. And the last one was their pretest score. So I'm just going to write pretest. Test. Okay. The next column type. These are all numeric. Don't worry about it. Width. Don't worry about it. It just tells you how how many characters you can put. Don't worry about that. Decimals. Since nothing has been measured in decimals, I'm going to get rid of the decimals. They kind of bug me. Again, if you're measuring with decimals, leave them in. If you're not measuring with decimals, pick them out. Label, you could type whatever you want here. So exam, you could write, um, you know, final exam. Hours, you could type in hours, number of hours in the lab, whatever you want. Okay, labels is not that important, but it's what will show up on an SPSS output if you wanted to. So values, are these do not have values. Values is for categorical variables only, which we'll be doing here probably next week. So the missing, we don't worry. Columns, we don't worry. A line, um, it doesn't matter. You can put them in the right and the center. We, I'll just put them in the center. Again, because I like my stuff in the middle. Get in there, you. And here's the important part. You have to identify what type of measurements they are, what kind of variables they are. These are all scale. Scale is the same as continuous. A continuous variable is just a regular counting number where 7 is greater than 3. You got it? Okay. So we did all that. Let's take a, one quick look at our data view. Everything's nice and neat. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and go to Analyze. We're going to go to Descriptive Statistics. And we're just exploring. Let's explore. So instead of doing them one at a time, I'm going to click all these into the dependent list. I'm going to look at what statistics I can do. Descriptives is what we want. So that's the mean, the median, the mode, standard deviation, whether it's skewed or not. We also want um, outliers, right? Outliers will affect your normality. Click OK. Plots. Unclick the stem and leaf, click the histogram. It will tell us through the histogram if the data is normal or not. But we should, we'll also get a skewness factor and a kurtosis factor. So there's more than one way to do everything in SPSS. Click continue. Options, there's nothing under options. So again, I'm going to strongly recommend that you click all these little boxes and see what they have available for you. So once you have everything done, you click OK. And this is the output sheet for your SPSS. Output, first box, tells you how many were in each variable. So you got 100 exam scores, 100 hours, 100 percent, 100 pretests, etc., etc. Tells you how many are missing, none. Here's your descriptive box. So here's for your exam variable. See that right there? There's the mean. There's the standard error. There's a confidence interval. There's the median, the variance, blah, 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 blah. Here's your skewness and kurtosis numbers. Okay, if these numbers are 
larger than one, you might have an issue. But again, we're going to look at the histogram. And here's your second variable, hours. Get back up there. There's the mean, standard deviation, et cetera, et cetera. Let's look at percents. There's the mean, standard deviation, et cetera, et cetera. Last one is the pretest. There's the mean. There's everything else. Okay, next box, extreme values. That doesn't mean they're outliers. That just means they're either the minimums or the maximums of the data. So here's the histogram on exam. It is bimodal. It is not normal. you got a problem. Here's the box plot for exam. Remember, these, these horizontal lines split the data into 25% groups. So in other words, 25% of the, of the exam people were between, eh, right around between 75 and 100. This big line in the middle is the median. So there's your, that's, that's your halfway mark, et cetera, et cetera. So now we're going to switch to hours. Again, it's not very normal. It, it, you have issues with this data. This is not normal. It's almost bimodal. And the box plot will tell us in hours we have a couple of outliers. So in other words, the outliers mean that um, they're, they're either much bigger or much smaller than the rest of the data. So this number right here, 66, that's the 66th person. So if you go back to your data sheet and look at number 66, his hours should be up to like 73 or 74, which is, which is considered an outlier. They use the IQR, the interquartile range, to identify outliers. And then on the other end, you got somebody, number 17, he's down to like 26 or 27. And so here's percents. It's, it's probably normal enough. Okay, that's not a big deal. And... Here's your box plot. Again, it looks pretty symmetrical. It's not perfect, but it's probably normal enough to continue. Here's a histogram. This histogram is skewed to the right. How to tell the direction of a skew is if you were looking at the silhouette of a rat, if this was the shadow of a rat, the rat's tail would be the direction of the skew. So this one is skewed to the right. Again, it's not normal. And the pretest you have... Looks like you got another outlier up here, number 66. So he scored real high in the pretest. So that number 66 guy is an outlier. Normally you would throw him out, but that's probably not necessary. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. MGZ out.